we are going to continue with the request section. Let's talk about route parameters, which the documentation only briefly talks about, but it's something really powerful. To summarize it, if you want to access variables defined in your HTTP request, you can put variables within your route, which will be accessible within your controller. This might seem a bit confusing at first, but trust me, it's really simple and really powerful. Let's add a route called tickets, name, and then a variable name. This is going to be what you grab within your controller. So, for example, when the user enters the web address tickets forward slash name forward slash David, David gets assigned to the name variable, which is available within the controller. And speaking of controllers, let's send this route to the tickets controller and to the method name. When we originally created the controller, we created a resource controller that Laravel generates common methods like store, index, and etc. But in this case, we'll have to create the name method as it's something custom. Let's do that now. When we create the method, let's dependency inject the request object and then the name variable. Laravel will first dependency inject any type hinted objects like request and then in order assign the variable. We called this variable name because that makes sense to us. But as you'll see, we could change this to something else if we wanted to. So within the method, let's die and dump the contents of name. Great, we see what we expect. Let's now change the variable name to pink. See, we get the same response. Pretty powerful stuff that I'm sure you can see you'll be using in the future. Moving on, let's talk about flashing the session. Sometimes it's beneficial to store the user submission request for the next page. A classic example of this is when a user fills out a form and you want to redirect them back to that form because something is incorrect. We can do that with flash. However, there are times when some data would not be appropriate to flash, things like passwords. Luckily, Laravel provides two great methods for this, flash only and flash accept, which do as the names imply. Now that you've got some flash data, how do you access it? Simple, using the request object and the method old. Another helpful thing that request provides is access to cookies. Simply call the method cookie on the request object to access it. To set a cookie, however, is slightly more involved. You have two options. You attach the cookie to the response helper method, or you can use the cookie facade. Whichever option you choose, just try to be consistent. There is nothing worse than doing things one way and then another if there's no real benefit. Finally, the request object can help you with files either retrieving them using the method file or by calling the name of the input submission file. It's always better to be explicit in programming, which is why I feel the file method is a much better approach than the input file name. If you've just come to this project as a new developer, what does request photo mean? Does that mean the name of the photo? The link of the photo? What? But the request file method tells you instantly this is an uploaded file. Once you've requested the file, you are now free to store the file using the store method, which hooks into the storage options of Laravel. It's out of scope for this video, but the storage options with Laravel link in to a popular library, which allows access to third party services, like storing your files on Amazon S3, Google, and of course your own server. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to store the file. The request section of Laravel has a lot of options and some things that's not covered in this video because it's important to read over it yourself and practice with it. Don't go to the exam without practicing because what's the point of passing an exam if you can't apply it to an interview question or worse, the job? Once you've read the documentation and practice, move on to the quiz for this section.